Hey everyone, Dan Takashi here. SoftBank, it's been in the news tons the last couple of weeks. The stock price was tanked because it was the NASDAQ whale purchasing tons of risky call options. Then the stock price went up significantly because it announced that it might sell its stake in RMH to NVIDIA. Also, it announced that it is considering what's called a management buyout. Now, this news of the management buyout has been getting lots of controversy across social media, across no normal news. And I wanna try to talk to you today about why I think this news is really suspicious. And I actually think there's a low chance of this happening. Not only that, but I wanna tell you what I think I should, I recommend for you to do with your portfolio, with your money, with SoftBank stock. For those of you new viewers to my channel, my name is Dan. I'm a former Wall Street guy, former hedge fund guy, traveled the world and came back to Tokyo, Japan, where I was born just recently, just started YouTube this year. The Japanese channel started in January and the English channel you're watching right now, it's brand new, just started a few months ago. So would very much would appreciate if you subscribe to my channel uh, below and follow me going forward. Uh, as usual today, I want to break down today's theme into three main topics. Number one, guys, I want to talk about what the heck is a management buyout. Explain the very basics here in a few minutes so you understand what this is and why SoftBank is considering such a thing and why the stock price is reacting favorably to news about a management buyout. Then number two, I'm going to talk about why I don't think this is going to happen. <laughs> I'll talk to you about the news going back to the last few years regarding uh, possibilities of a management bio and why I think this is very unlikely to happen for SoftBank. And then number three, last but not least, I'll tell you what I recommend I think you should do with your money regarding SoftBank stock. Okay, so let's get started. Guys, just to let you know, SoftBank today, I'm talking about SoftBank Group, not SoftBank Telecommunications, SoftBank Group. So let's get that out of the way right off bat. Management buyout, what is a management buyout? What the heck is this? And why is this considered even good for SoftBank? Guys, management buyout, as you can probably look this up according to Wikipedia, it's a form of acquisition in which a company's existing managers acquire large part or all of the company uh, from the rest of the shareholders. Now, what the heck does this usually mean? You guys, usually a management buyout means, and this is according to Deloitte's report, but usually before the management buyout, a company that is listed publicly, it's usually owned majority by the shareholders, lots of different shareholders, let's say in the blue, and then the CEO or the management owns, let's say the green, let's call this management. And then after a management buyout, the shareholders all get bought out at, of course, a respectable price that everybody has to agree on, right? According to a shareholders annual meeting, or sorry, shareholders meeting an AGM, then afterwards, the blue is gone. And usually the management owns a bigger portion there's other management that comes in and what's called a private equity sponsor. So usually these management buyouts, there's a lot of different types of financing. Usually it's done through private equity or debt financing or the combination of the other. Now, there's a lot of different types of management buyouts, but for the most part, a big private equity fund will come in and then together with the bank, uh, you know, th that provides some sort of debt, then provide together with a private equity fund that gives a cash and usually sometimes a high yield or mezzanine debt. This is what's usually called in between debt and equity. It's usually higher yield. It's considered riskier. They usually get paid later on uh, if there's a bankruptcy. Then they all together pile in a bunch of money and then they try to buy uh, the stock. Now, why is this considered good for SoftBank? Mainly because this is according to uh, just a few months ago. So this is a little bit outdated. Currently, the market cap of uh, SoftBank is about 128 billion. But SoftCamp's uh, current market cap, according to the stock market, is a lot lower than its actual shareholder value. If you calculate the sum of all of its investments, its holdings minus its debt. So there's a big gap between the two, which is the reason why a management buyout sounds very promising to SoftBank. And the reason why a management buyout news made the stock price go up when Masayoshi San, the CEO, talked about the possibility of this happening. So guys, these are the basics of a management buyout. It's usually done through what's called an LBO, like I said, a leverage buyout. There's lots of different ways of doing it, but for the most part, as far as 
I know, according to my friends in private equity, for the most part, it's a combination. A private equity comes in, there's debt financing, and at the end of the day, there's seller financing as well. So it's a lot of money usually that's involved. It's really good usually for the private equity companies, and it's usually good for the investment banks that are advising because they get fees involved, and a deal gets done. And SoftBank is trying to do this because, for the most part, the sum of what it owns, including Vision Fund, Arm, T-Mobile, SoftBank, Alibaba, is bigger than the current market cap that is uh you know at least valued by the stock market at the moment so that's my very brief few minute summary of a management bio i know you guys if you're in private equity if you're a professional you're gonna say dan you missed a bunch of stuff but that was just a very brief overview management comes in tries to buy the rest of the company because they think the company's undervalued okay so now let's get into the second part of this video why do i think this is very low chance of happening there's a number of reasons for this number one first and foremost let's just look at the math here so currently right now the market value of softbank is around 126 billion dollars according to roughly when this article was written about so okay about a week ago or so about a week and a half ago so of this right now currently masih son owns about 20 percent, and the rest of other management or uh so sort of you know let's say other people who own it that Masayoshi Sun has control over or a lot of uh, influence over is about a 7%. So let's say Masayoshi Sun plus his partners, his friends all own about 27% of SoftBank. So that remains about a 60, uh, sorry, about a 73% uh, remaining in this $126 billion. So that's over, I'm doing the math here roughly in my head, uh, that's over $80 billion, almost $90 billion roughly. So According to this, there's still a lot that they would need to buy for them to do a full management buyout. Now, there are different types of management buyouts, but for the most part, it is try to buy all of the company, not large part, right? Of course, they could try to buy 51% and that would be a different story. Okay, but for the most part, management buyouts, it's they have to buy all of it because otherwise there's still gonna be remaining shareholders. Uh, listed in the stock market and they want to go private that's the point of a management buyout is to get off the stock market and go private so that leaves a huge chunk of money that they still need to buy and so that's the first biggest problem is where are they going to get this money given the fact that usually most of this money comes from the management itself but that's a lot of money masa does not have that much money and it usually comes from private investors private equity funds sovereign wealth management funds etc but the problem is recently softbank's performance in its investments has been terrible absolutely terrible namely it's vision fund that it manages and this vision fund which actually started uh roughly around 2019 when it started investing but it actually first started investing around 2017 uh so in about two years uh, this vision fund which is about 98.6 billion they invested about 83.8 billion in 145 845 days so that's almost about 100 million dollars per day very quickly they invested and the performance has been terrible as of uh may 2020 this year the vision fund reported an annual loss of annual losses this is just one year of 17.7 .7 billion for monday now this is from the 75 billion in the investments they had based on the previous year's uh asset uh weighting so guys that's doing the math right there that's about 24 percent roughly it's about losing about one fourth the uh <laughs> amount that they invested in one year that's dismal performance that's absolutely terrible guys so regarding this performance here very difficult i think to get uh, a big sovereign wealth fund to come back in uh you know even the abu dhabi state investment company which is the big sovereign wealth fund which uh talked you know invested a lot of money into the first vision fund it's going to be difficult for them to get involved and to convince them to get involved in what i think is this management buyout for softbank because the performance of vision fund has been absolutely terrible not only that but there's a lot of uh sort of ambivalence i think to get involved in the softbank uh buyout because mainly uh, masayoshi son wants to maintain control and we can see that he's had sort of had tensions and issues with the rest of the board we can see uh shigenobu nagamori san the ceo of nida corp he stepped down from the board two years ago and just last year towards the end of last year unico founder yanai san he also stepped down from the board so these very prominent board members are stepping down and there's not that many independent board members and this has actually been a continued problem for softbank if we go actually back to 2013 
you know, there were other activist funds like uh, Third Point LLC that came in and tried to invest in SoftBank. Third Point was very involved at that point in trying to have a some sort of uh, value buyout for Sony at that point. I was on, I was on Wall Street. And I remember trading Sony, uh, and this news was constantly out. Now they were also talking about SoftBank as well, but this didn't happen. And Third Point actually in, ended up selling their stake in SoftBank. From what I hear, because they didn't think that it was possible just because there were not enough independent board members and Masayoshi san wanted to maintain control. Uh, not only that, that we see recently with activist funds such as Elliott, uh, they've come in and they've bought about 3% of about $3 billion uh, of the uh, fund right now. I'm sorry, of SoftBank at the moment. And yes, they are trying to talk. He's trying to talk to Masayoshi san about, uh, about some sort of buyout structure, management buyout structure, but they own such a small stake that they don't really have that much shareholder influence the majority of the influence still comes from masayoshi san so regarding the fact that this is going to be very expensive it's going to be difficult to raise money and there's a lot of ambivalence regarding the history of their board members not that many of them are independent and the independent ones are stepping down i think it's going to be very difficult to conduct such a <coughs> management bio again in the future uh, this seems to me like a very unlikely situation where they're going to be able to raise this amount of money. Now, do note that, yes, they are unloading lots of assets right now. Yes, I understand. Uh, they're unloading what I think about $93 billion worth of assets uh, at the moment. A uh, big one that's sort of in the news right now is SoftBank is try is selling right now uh, its deal in Arm H. So of the $93.6 billion in asset sales that they're conducting right now, about 36.5 is coming from its selling of its, uh, NVIDIA, of its Arm H stock to NVIDIA. Now, the thing is, with this deal, guys, of this 93.6 billion, the majority of this is not going to happen right away. Take, for example, its deal with Arm H. Now, 15 billion in cash, that's great, but 21.5 billion comes in NVIDIA stock. And this is not going to close until March 2022. That's what's expected right now. It has to go through all the regulatory approvals, including China. It has to get regulatory approval from China. Very difficult, I think, given the fact that China probably sees this as some sort of threat for a company uh, uh, to get more and more and more technology access. So I think this is going to be difficult. Um, yes, SoftBank is trying to offer right now another 11.1 .1 billion. It's selling of if SoftBank Telecom Company uh, understood. That'll probably be able to go through just from the fact that, that they have more influence over that company. Another pool of class, 42 billion from the sale of stakes in companies such as Alibaba and U.S. carrier T-Mobile Inc. is already earmarked for share and debt buybacks. But again, this is not completely done yet. I, I think all this money, this 93.6 billion in asset sales, it's going to take a few years. So even if it does happen, it's going to take a few years. And when it does happen, being able to use, they would have to use almost all of it to conduct a management buyout, which I think is going to be very unlikely uh, in this situation. I think that it's going to be hard for them to be able to use all of this. I think a lot of the shareholders would be very upset over the situation. Not only that, but at the end of the day, guys, Masayoshi San, I think he wants to remain in control of the company. And usually a management buyout, when it's done through this type of structure, at the very end of the management buyout, usually the private equity sponsor owns a big chunk of the company and they have control and the CEO will lose a lot of control when it goes private. And at the end of the day, I don't think that Masayoshi Sean will want to cede control of this company. This is his baby. This has, he usually makes almost all the decisions. So I think unlikely. So again, lots of different reasons, but I think it's very suspicious that a deal like this would go through. In my opinion, Masayoshi Sean, he announced this again sort of the same idea that he did in 2015 about maybe doing a possible management bio but i think it was really mainly to support the stock price given the fact that he was getting a lot of riffraff a lot of commotion over the derivative bets uh, call options whatnot that he was placing in the market on behalf of softbank and i think to sort of hit the mark you know to uh, defend the color of softbank he announced that there's a possibility and that sort of uh, helped the stock bank uh, soft price i think that's kind of what happened and i think this is sort of a suspicious uh nothing illegal but suspicious tactic to defend the stock price okay now let's get into number three 
What do I think you should do with your position in SoftBank? Or what do you think you should do with your money in general regarding SoftBank stock? Guys, as usual and always, investing is always self-responsibility. I'm one YouTuber, so make your own decisions, make your own judgments, listen to other people, but at the end of the day, make your own judgments. And at the end of the day, guys, please see my below videos on long-term investment, short-term investment, the different types of technical indicators for the basics before you make your uh, investments and also before you listen to my ideas. I think it's a better use of your time. For the most part, guys, I recommend you invest your long-term investment, 70, 90% of your net worth. This is for long-term and then 30 to 10% for short-term. Okay, so with that sort of out of the way, let's talk about what to do with SoftBank stock. So guys, SoftBank stock, I initially recommended to make a short sell around here. It was great for a few days and then I very quickly, after a couple of days, I said, buy back half, mainly because the I saw, you know, the, the technicals were indicating, especially in the stochastics very quickly, that the indicating that there was probably going to be a little bit bounce back. But not only that, but I thought the whole call options and derivative bets news was very misunderstood. I'll post this. I'll post the uh, my previous SoftBank video, but I think it was a very misunderstood situation. There were a lot of other people buying uh derivatives in tech stocks and softbank was really getting a lot of bad heat for it but i think once the market calms down i think they would probably stop selling softbank stock and that was one of my big reasons why for buying back half now what's my recommendation today uh given the fact that the stock price is you know it's a little bit roughly around similar to when i originally recommended a short sell i think right now you buy back another quarter. So you buy back half here, you buy back another quarter here. That leaves another very small short position. Now, why do I think you buy back? Just because right now, the market to me seems like it is sort of uh, calming down, uh, in my opinion. The main reason or the main, let's say, initiation point, I think, for the market going down was the NASDAQ market. This is the NASDAQ QQQ ETF. It's the same chart. In my opinion, this looks very likely like the MACD is about to cross, indicating that maybe tech is going to start making a upward momentum comeback again. And if it does, then it's probably going to have an impact on the soft bank price. So that's my reason for buying back a little bit of the short position. And but the reason why I'm not buying back everything is because the chart still the chart still doesn't look good to me. Look, the MACD is crossing a new sell signal again. Not only that, but the MACD is in a declining uh, formation at the moment. Not only that, but also the stock price itself is in sort of a declining trend moment at the at the moment. So I don't see this as uh, a strong indicator for sell, but I don't see it as a strong indicator for a buy either. It's sitting right in the middle of its Ichimoku cloud. It's also sitting right in the middle of its Bollinger Band, indicating that statistically right now it's not undersold. It's not under. It's not oversold. It's not overbought either. So unfortunately, right now I think that if you still hold some stocks position short, right now you cover a little bit and then you remain short a little bit. And if you don't have any positions in SoftBank. Short term, I think you do nothing. Long term, I don't recommend this stock for your portfolio, in my opinion. Uh, I think it's just too risky. The majority of SoftBank stock is still in, uh, you know, just from his investments. And his investments, it's very, very high risk. The majority of the owner <laughs> stock market value comes from Alibaba, one investment. It's, it's a one hit wonder. And to me, Betting long term on strategies where the majority of the, the uh, performance is coming from one investment, that's a low sharp ratio investment. Longer term, I could not recommend this to my viewers. Uh, I'm a big fan of Masayoshi Shishan. I've read his book, I've read his bio. I think he's a great guy. I think his character is awesome. But just uh, thinking very logically here, longer term, I would not uh, recommend this for anyone's portfolio. Thanks so much, guys, for watching my video. Hopefully, you enjoyed the content. Please subscribe to my channel below, and I'm looking forward to your comments, guys. Thanks so much, guys. Hope you have a great weekend.